Welcome to Training Tuesday for April 18th, 2023. Our first learner is one of our corn snakes. Her name is Roberta Lincoln. And the behavior I'm asking her to do is to target out of her moss box. And she does that fantastically. And so she gets reinforced with some kind of rodent. I don't remember what I gave her. It looked like maybe a fuzzy or a hopper. Our next learner is an outstanding example of a behavior that she's practiced many times. So she is targeting out of her cave over a perch and pausing at the target to earn reinforcement. Her name was number one, and this snake is the same species, I'm really a Bradley, his name is Tenavik, and I'm teaching him to do that same behavior. He's targeting out of his moss box. I'm asking him to target over the perch and come underneath it to earn reinforcement. And now you can tell he's not as experienced as number one because he is slower to do the behavior. It's not as fluid. And then there's a level of frustration right there towards the end where he strikes at the target. And then he gets reinforced once he pauses at it for a few seconds. So let's look at number one again, just to see the difference of a more experienced learner and how saliently she does this behavior. It's quick, it's fluid, it's without hesitation. She's done this a bunch. Next, we have another Morelia Bradley Castiel simply targeting to his right at a 90 degree angle only because he already was coming out of the enclosure before I was ready, so I had him do something simple. And then we're gonna see Merlin, who is one of my very experienced target trained snakes. He's in his enclosure up on this lip that is created by these vision PVC enclosures. So it's kind of like a small ledge at the very top of his enclosure. So he's way up there, partially on that lip and hanging onto it. And I ask him to please target down off that lip out of the front of the enclosure. And I want him to bring his body over this black bar. And I want the majority of the front half of his body over the black bar so that when he strikes and coils the prey, he wraps around and anchors onto that bar and he doesn't take the prey and retreat back into his enclosure. Remember, the reason that I mainly use the target training is to shift them in and out of their enclosure and move them to different locations. And so we practice this a ton to make sure that that is a behavior that they remain very good at so that when I need it, it's in place. This is Sabine, and a few weeks ago, Sabine did a similar targeting practice and she fell off her ledge. So I'm being very careful this week to make sure I had a shelf underneath her and that I supported her with the tongs so that she didn't fall off her ledge. Now we're back to Castiel, who has now moved over to his net. And so with him, I have to create an exercise based on where he's at at the time. He moved over to his net for his second rep. So now I'm just asking him to move forward over his shelf. He's got this magnetic ledge that's attached to his door. And I'm asking him just to partially come off the net and onto the ledge. Not all the way because I want him to be able to still anchor his tail onto that net so that he doesn't fall once he takes the prey just because he's outgrowing that ledge. So this way he was able to anchor his tail onto the net, support part of his body on the ledge and, and eat without falling. This is Sabine's second repetition. And again, I'm trying to support her this time so that she doesn't fall. I just asked her to look to the left. I delivered reinforcement and I hang on to it for a minute. I make sure she's not gonna fall. And then I go ahead and close her door so that if she does come off that ledge, she's inside her enclosure. Moving back over to Castiel for repetition number three. Now he is on his net and on these reins that I've hung in there as an enrichment item. And I'm just asking him to target down towards his water dish and I deliver reinforcement. So he had pretty easy sessions this time. Now we're just gonna take a parting look at Merlin. I did a second repetition with him where I gave him this 75 gram Reptilink. He had gone up into Boreth's enclosure and I wanted him out of Boreth's enclosure because it's someone else's enclosure. And even though that snake's not in there, I wanted Merlin out and to go back in his own enclosure. So I targeted him out onto the station. He's eating this Reptilink, which, which just looks ginormous. It's a 75 gram Mega Blend Reptilink. 
But after he was finished, he goes back into Boreth's enclosure and he has not left. He has taken it over and he is now living in the top enclosure instead of in his own enclosure on the bottom. 